John Galt. That is the question posed to the panel. Well, the obvious answer is John Galt is a fictional character in a novel, in my view, the best novel ever written, by Ayn Rand. But really, who is John Galt? Because it's more than a fictional character in a book. John Galt has become a symbol, a symbol of the great productive genius, a symbol of the creator, the builder, the maker, the engineer, the scientist, the businessman, but a symbol of all of those who says enough is enough. Get your hands out of my pockets. Stop mooching me. Stop looting me. Stop taking my stuff. Stop demanding my sacrifice. Stop demanding my sacrifice. Stop making me feel guilty for things that I should feel proud of. That's who John Galt is. We have a sculpture out there in the auditorium, I'm sure you've all seen it, of a big cow. And all these people are trying to get, I guess, the milk, right? They're all struggling, fighting with one another to get the cow. And the cow in the sculpture represents the state. Everybody there is the welfare state. Everybody trying to get their peace and knocking people out of the way. And it's a great image. It, you get it, right? It's the welfare state. But it's a deceptive image. The world is much worse than that cow. Because the cow produces its own milk. The state produces nothing. Creates nothing. The only way all those people can come suckling at the tits of the state is because they steal it from John Galt first. There is no production at the state level. There is no creation. You and you and you and you produce. You and you and you create. And then it's taken from you and distributed to other people. So who is John Galt? Well, I might have said that John Galt was the man who stopped the motor of the world. The man who took a world in decline and accelerated that decline and brought the world to the very bottom of despair so that he could re help rebuild the world, rebuild a free world, rebuild a world that respected ability, respected talent, respected creativity, respected the rights of the individual. But what is that motive of the world that John Galt stopped? It's really, really important that we understand what it is that drives the world, that drives the growth, drives the success of the world. Because unfortunately, our society is dominated by a Marxist philosophy that rejects the idea of the real motor. What is it? What is it that produces the real values that we all have? What is it that makes our life possible? What is it that creates this beautiful auditorium, these wonderful lights, the video projection, your clothes, the food that you ate before you came here? What is the motor that actually produces the wealth and the standard of living and the quality of life that we have? What is the tool that we must use in order to live successfully it is our minds, it is our reason, it is our capacity to think. And this is what's been attacked, our capacity to think, it's what's been attacked over and over and over again. For Marx, it's not the mind that creates value, what creates, Martin? What creates value for Marx? Muscle, I shouldn't point there, there's not much there, but <laughs> muscle, <clears throat> muscle is what creates value. The rejection of the mind. And indeed, if you ask, if you ask, why do we still have socialism? 
given its utter, complete, unequivocal, unquestionable failure, <coughs> just look at Venezuela. The answer is because people take socialism on faith, not on reason. Socialism is the rejection of reason. It's the rejection of fact. It's the rejection of evidence. It's the rejection of economics. Socialism is, people believe in socialism on faith, not on evidence, not on facts, not on reason. And it's no accident that socialism is a consequence of Marx and the whole tradition of philosophy that has rejected the idea of the efficacy, the competence of the human mind, of human reason. What is the other reason that socialism is still alive and well in all of its various forms? Statism, fascism, socialism, social democracy, that's a popular word today. Because socialism is the only economic system in all its variations, consistent with the moral values, the moral ideals, that we have all been taught since we were this big. Because we were taught when we were very little that in a moral sense, in a fundamental sense, in a real sense, our lives don't belong to us. Our moral duties, our moral responsibilities are not to our own life, not to our own happiness, not to our own success, but to others. The greatest moral virtues are being selfless. The greatest moral virtue is to sacrifice. Well, socialism, all they do is ask you to sacrifice. What are you complaining about? This is what morality has taught you. This is virtue. This is good. So you're suffering? Who cares? Suffering is a sign that you be selfless. I would worry if you were happy, because that would probably mean you being a little self-interested in life. And we know that self-interest is a no-no. Socialism is alive and well because the morality of altruism, the morality of otherism, the morality that says that your life does not belong to you, that your life is there to serve others is alive and well. John Galt says no. John Galt rejects that idea. John Galt is the Atlas who shrugs and he says, I'm not carrying the world anymore because I don't believe in this morality. My life is mine. Your life is yours. My duty, my responsibility is not to live for you, it's to live for me, to make my life the best that it can be. And you should make your life the best that it can be. You know, this was a revolution, and this is what really makes America great. In 1776, for the first time in human history, the American founders declared, declared, that for the first time in human history, your life did not belong to the tribe, or to the state, or to the Pope, or to any collective group out there. For the first time in human history, we had a political recognition that your life belonged to you. And the state's only job, only responsibility, only duty is to protect your life, is to protect your freedom, to provide you with the security, which by the way, you Brazilians do not have, turns out, right? Which is, which to me, if you're looking for one sign of the failure of the Brazilian state, it's the fact that you cannot walk at night safely in your streets. Because that is the one responsibility of the state, to keep us safe. That's it. They just did that job, life would be great. The founders of America declared that we each have an inalienable right to our own lives. What does that mean? What does a right mean? Today that word is abused and being raped by the left. 
Rights mean freedoms, freedom of action. What it means that you have a right to your life means that you, are, you must be free to act in pursuit of the values necessary to make your life the best life that it can be for you. For the first time in human history, there was this declaration that you are not a slave, you are not a servant of society, you're not a cog in a machine. There is no collective consciousness, but it's you, your life, that's what's important. And how do we live our lives? How do we make the most of our lives? If we want to live the best life that we can live, what is the tool that allows us to do that? Well, it's the same tool the engineer uses. It's the same tool the scientist uses. It's the motor who drives the world because ultimately the motor that drives the world is the motor that drives you. It's your reason. It's your ability to reason, to think rationally, to take in facts, integrate them, create new knowledge and move forward. And this is true of science, but this is also true on what values you should pursue as a human being. So, John Galt, who is John Galt, right? Is the man who says your life is yours, to live as you see fit, to pursue rational values that are make your life the best life that it can be, and that that is the essence of morality. Now, if I'm such a person who wants to succeed and achieve and use my reason, what is the enemy? What does the enemy look like? What can stop me from doing that? What can stop me from achieving my values, from achieving my success, from achieving my life? It's a gun. It's force. It's coercion. If somebody places a gun to the back of your head, forget about reason. Right? Hopefully you know some jiu-jitsu, but reason is not relevant. So, the, this is the reason why we want to form a state in which coercion is banned. Because if you ban coercion, you free up the human spirit, you free up human reason, you free up individuals to pursue their values, to pursue their life, to exercise their thinking in the way that they, they believe in. So the non-initiation principle, the non-initiation of force that libertarians talk about, rests on a foundation of morality, a morality of individualism. Collectivism necessitates force. Altruism necessitates force. It is only individualism, a morality of individualism, that leads to the non-initiation of force. And of course, people, who want to live a reasoned life. Don't want mother government telling them how to live and how to live. They want to be free. They want to be left alone. So freedom is a consequence of the value of each one of you as individuals. Freedom is a consequence, not a starting point of an individualistic philosophy and individualistic morality. So who is John Galt? John Galt is any one of you who chooses to be John Galt. It's any one of you who chooses to live your life fully, rationally, in pursuit of values, meaningful values. John Galt is any one of you who stands up and fights. Fights for freedom. Fights for your own life. Fights for your own liberty. What John Galt is calling on us to do is to rise up and revolt. What he's calling on us is for a revolution. Not the revolution of muskets. Not the revolution of guns, but the revolution of ideas. What we need are new ideas. We need to throw out the old ideas. 
We need to educate a culture out there of these new ideas. And we need to go to Brasilia and clean house. No. Right at the foundation. Now, Brazil is at a turning point, hopefully, for much better. But what Brazil really needs, what Brazil really needs right now, is an army of John Galtz. An army committed to individualism and freedom and property rights. An army committed to a political system that does one thing and does it well protects our rights. An army that will take the Brazilian Constitution and put it in the trash can of history. And create a new Constitution. A new Constitution built on the principles that the Founding Fathers, not just of America, I think of the Founding Fathers as the Founding Fathers of any country that wants to be free based on the principles articulated by the Founding Fathers of all free men, the principles of individual rights, the principles of individual liberty. So who is John Galt? John Galt is you if you choose to be him. Thank you all.